Boys and girls, it's such a lovely weather today. So I went out for a walk. Then I saw a dandelion. It's broad, it's fluffy. I picked it up and I gave it a blow. Just like that. And then I saw the seeds fly off wherever the wind blows them. I love watching dandelion flying off. Because I know that when the seeds fall on the ground, a new dandelion will grow and the cycle continues. Isn't that amazing how they spread their seeds? Talking about spreading, let's talk about the spreading of the gospel today. We've been looking at the book of Acts, and if you remember, last week we were up to chapter 6 and 7, where we read that the church is starting to grow, more and more people are in the church. So that's why the apostles, they chose seven men who were full of the Holy Spirit and were wise, in order to help them to look after the people in the church. Now, one of them was named Stephen. Last week, we read from the Bible that he was following the Lord Jesus all the way. We saw that he was performing miracles just like the Lord. He was opposed by the Pharisees just like his Lord. He was killed, stoned to death by the people who did not believe in him, just like how Jesus died on the cross. Yet he forgives those who killed him, just like how Jesus forgives those who nailed him to the cross. And from Stephen, we learn what it means to be following Jesus all the way. It's about saying no to ourselves. It's about picking up our cross to follow Jesus. And that's where we left off last week. Well, this week, we're going to look at another man. His name is Philip. Let's find out what happened to him. Philip was a Christian who was willing to go and tell people about Jesus. We read about him in the book of Acts in the Bible. Philip and some of Jesus' disciples were telling people in the small towns of Samaria about Jesus Christ, God's son, and many people believed the good news. Then God sent an angel to tell Philip, go this way into the desert. God has something for you to do. Philip listened and obeyed. He wondered why God had sent him to such a lonely place, but he knew that God's spirit was with him. God wanted Philip to tell someone about Jesus. But who? Soon a very important man from the country of Ethiopia came past in his chariot. He was the boss of the queen of Ethiopia's treasure, and he was reading the words of Isaiah from the Bible. Philip asked the man if he understood the words he was reading. I can't understand them, he answered, and I have no one to teach me. So Philip explained to the man from Ethiopia how God had written long ago about his son and that anyone who believes in Jesus would become a child of God. I want to get baptized right now to show that I believe in Jesus, the Ethiopian man said. If you truly believe you can, Philip replied. I do believe Jesus is the son of God, the man from Ethiopia declared. So Philip baptized him in the river. So at the beginning of Acts chapter 8, we read that on the day, the church began to grow. And in Jerusalem, they began to be attacked and treated badly by the people who do not believe in them. And a lot of the believers, they started to scatter. That means they started to leave Jerusalem and went to somewhere else. But even though they have to leave Jerusalem and go to other places, they did not stop believing in Jesus. Wherever they go, they tell people about Jesus, about the good news. And because of that, more and more people, even people not in Jerusalem, people in Judea, people in Samaria, they also believed in Jesus. Now, one of the believers named Philip, he was one of the people who have to leave Jerusalem. He went along to a city called Samaria. And there he started to preach the good news about Jesus. And one day, an angel came to speak to Philip. Go south to the desert road. The angel said, it's the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. Philip was already in Samaria. But the angel asked him, to go south, passing the road that is from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now at that moment, Philip still doesn't know what's ahead of him. The angel didn't tell him that he will be meeting someone, that he will be doing something very important. Philip followed the instruction that the angel gave him. He walked down south, and exactly as what the angel said on the road where people go from Jerusalem to Gaza, he met an Ethiopian official. Now this man worked 
in the palace. There was someone with authority and probably quite rich. He went to Jerusalem to worship in the temple and he was on his way home to Ethiopia. Now, as he was traveling on his chariot, he was reading. He was reading the book written by the prophet Isaiah that's in our Old Testament. And as Philip saw him, the Holy Spirit appears to him and the Holy Spirit asked Philip to go near to the chariot. So Philip ran up to the chariot. He heard the man reading the book of Isaiah. Without thinking too much, he went forward and talked to him. Do you understand what you're reading, sir? Philip asked him. Well, how can I? I need someone to explain it to me. And that's confirming that he doesn't understand what it means. So immediately, Philip hopped onto the chariot and he started to read the scripture together with the official. And this is the part that he was reading from the book of Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to be killed, just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off. He did not open his mouth. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. Hmm, no wonder why the official didn't understand. It's not easy to understand. Who's that he? Who's the sheep? Who's the lamb? And what does it mean that his life was cut off? All these questions were in the official's head. So he asked Philip, Tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? Is he talking about himself or is he talking about someone else? And if it's someone else, then who it is? So Philip explains to him, you know what? What Moses wrote, what Isaiah wrote, and all the other prophets, what they wrote were all pointing to one person. Do you know who that person is? The sheep that's going to be killed, the lamb that is silent, the person who has been treated badly, refused a fair trial, and at the end he was cut off from the earth. Philip told the official, it's Jesus. He is the son of God. He came to earth as a man. He teach people about the kingdom of God and they nailed him onto a cross and there he died. He took away all our punishment when he was on the cross. And three days after that, he came back to life and he is now in heaven with God. This is who the prophet Isaiah was pointing, talking about. So Philip explains or about Jesus and his salvation to the official. He told him that he need to repent, to live in the Lord Jesus and be baptized. Now, as they continue to travel along the road, they saw some water. And because the official just learned that he need to believe in Jesus and be baptized, he said to Philip, look, there's some water there. What's going to stop me from being baptized? He want to believe in Jesus and he want to be baptized. Well, of course, Philip wouldn't reject. So they hop off, jump into the water, and Philip baptized the official. As the Ethiopian official come up out of the water, something amazing happened. The Holy Spirit came, and not only that, he took away Philip, and Philip was no longer seen. Even though he is still a bit puzzled of where Philip had gone, it doesn't bother the official, because what's most important to him now is that he believed in Jesus. He was so happy, he was full of joy. And I'm sure he hopped right back to his chariot and ride as fast as he can to go home and to tell his friends and family what happened. The Bible tells us that Philip was seen next at a place called Asotus. And from there, he continued to travel around, preaching the good news in all the towns that he visited until he came to this place called Caesarea. Wow. I wonder how many people Philip would have been talking to and how many of them would believe in Jesus. Remember at the beginning I talked about dandelion, how the seeds flies off and wherever it lands, it continues to grow. I think the gospel is like that. It started off from Jerusalem and the seed, the gospel spreads everywhere. Even though it starts off as a bad reason because the apostles and the disciples, they were being persecuted. And they have to scatter, to run away. But that actually helps the gospel, the good news of Jesus spreads everywhere. Wherever all these believers went to, where they stop, they talk about the gospel. Just like those seeds from the dandelion, where they land, a new dandelion will grow. Well, not only Philip and the believers can do that, we can still do it today. We are also one of the seeds that we can spread the gospel. 
And here's what we can do. First, we need to obey and go. You see, when the angel asked Philip to go down south, he didn't question him. He just said, okay, I'll go. And when the Holy Spirit told him to go near the chariot and talk to that Ethiopian official, yes, again, he said, okay, I'll do that. If we want the gospel to spread, we have to obey and go. That's what Jesus taught as well. He sent out his apostles and disciples to tell people about the kingdom of God. And just before he went back to the Father, he left us a command, remember? We must go and make disciples of all nations. We can't just stay at one place. We have to go. Maybe going to our friends, maybe going to our grandparents, maybe going to our neighbor. Wherever it is, we have to go to them and tell them about the good news of Jesus. And that's the first thing we can do. The second thing we need to do is to read God's word and study it. You see, when Philip thought the Ethiopians was reading God's word, he can explain to him what it means. If Philip himself didn't understand the scripture, how can he explain it? the Ethiopian official. So I'm sure Philip spent time reading and understanding God's word. Now remember in the Old Testament, there is a part that's called Psalms. You remember who wrote them? That's right. Most of the Psalms were written by David. And he's one from Psalm 119 verse 34. It's like a prayer of David. This is what he said. Help me understand your law so that I may follow it. I will obey it with all my heart. Even David needs to ask God to help him to read and understand the word of God. We also have to read and, of course, understand the words of God in order to explain it to our friends. Well, you can start from reading the Bible. Do you have a Bible at home? And the next thing that you can do is to join the people who can explain the Bible to you. Could be your school scripture, could be Sunday school at a church. We need to read God's word and we need to study and understand God's word. And that's how the gospel can spread. And finally, we need to preach anywhere. Just like the believers that were scattered from Jerusalem, they preach the gospel. They tell people about the good news. And that's what Philip did as well. He traveled to everywhere. And as he traveled, he will be preaching the gospel. It doesn't have to be in a church. It doesn't have to be in a house. It can be on a chariot. It can be in a restaurant. We too can preach anywhere. The apostle Peter he wrote a letter to the Christian to give them encouragement. And this is what he said. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. Why do you believe in Jesus? Who is Jesus? What has he done? Have those answers ready so that whenever someone asks you, why are you a Christian? Why do you go to church on Sunday? And you can answer them. You can explain to them what is the gospel. Obey and go. Read and study. Preach anywhere. And together, we, just like the apostles and the believers in the book of Acts, in the early church, we too can spread the gospel of God, bringing it everywhere we go. Just like how the dandelion seeds rise off and start growing again. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that the gospel spread no matter what happened. Thank you that the apostles and the believers had a good example. As they travel to wherever they go, they will be preaching the gospel. Lord Jesus, please help us to obey and go to people who yet to know about you. Please help us to read and understand and study your words so that we too can explain to others who want to know about you. And help us to preach anywhere we go, to anyone that we may meet, telling them that Jesus loves them, inviting them to believe in you. Please let us to be part in spreading of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.